Buongiorno tutti and welcome to the last cook of Italian week on Jason's Lockdown Larder. Today we're doing my absolute favourites, chicken escallops. And I know that my daughter Rachel loves chicken escallop and spaghetti. And a lot of my mates actually go down to Child Bellas in Holborn and they always order chicken escallop and spaghetti. But obviously the restaurants are closed, so what can we do? I'm gonna show you how to cook it indoors and I promise you mine will be just as good. The hat's on, the hat's off, it's time to cook. So the first thing we have to do with our chicken breast is we have to cut it into two. So we just cut through, being very careful with our hands. And obviously whenever we're using raw chicken, we make sure that our hands are spotlessly clean before and after. I'm gonna do the cutting first. So both chicken and scallops, you cut them straight through the middle and you split them into two. So we can make two chicken breasts into four escallops. Go on my YouTube site, Jason's Lockdown Larder, the Cockney Cook, <laughs> and you will see how to join a chicken and you'll see exactly how I got these beautiful chicken breasts off a chicken. So, first thing we need to do, we get ourselves a little bit of cling film. I've got a hammer, but you can use a rolling pin if you haven't. Now, we're not gonna bash the life out of it, okay? But we're gonna just flatten it out. Lovely. So, that's our first one, done. There we are. It's now about the thickness of a pound coin, maybe a fraction thicker. Come back when I've done all four. Okay guys, I've now flattened all four of my escallops out. I'm gonna show you what we do next. So if we can just come in, you'll see I've got flour, egg and breadcrumbs. There's about 50 grams of flour there. There's one large egg and there's 75 grams of breadcrumbs. Watch this quick video on how I make my breadcrumbs. So the first thing we must do, and this is essential, is we must season our flour. So, a little bit of black pepper, nice big pinch of salt in there, and let's just mix it all up. So our flour is seasoned, but this is what makes my scallop slightly different. First thing, we've got our breadcrumbs. We get ourselves some Parmesan cheese. I'm grating fresh Parmesan. If you've got some, some of the already grated variety, that would work brilliantly. So we just put some Parmesan in there. This will be about eventually about two teaspoons for this amount, okay? So we just cut that in there. We've got a lovely sort of hint, a smack, a kiss of cheese in the background. And then get yourself one of these bad boys, a lemon, and let's get some lemon zest in there. Just the zest, and don't start grating half the lemon away. As you can see, as soon as we see the white, that's it, we move the lemon round, because we only want the zest. So we've got a little bit of zing from the lemon coming in, a little kind of kiss from the Amalfi Coast, and a little bit of Parmesan on the top. So we've got North Mead South there. And that is gonna do us perfectly. So that just gives us a little hint of something in those breadcrumbs that's gonna be the difference between just plain breadcrumbs and putting this in there. Now, of course, it's traditional to do just plain breadcrumbs, but I like to put a little bit of a twist on it, and I can assure you that will make a massive difference. First thing we need to do then, we take our chicken breast, we pop it in our seasoned flour. Give it a little dust off. Then we pop it in our egg, flip it over, 
And then the last thing we do, we get a nice big coating of our breadcrumbs. Oh God, it all looks, <laughs> it looks really good already. <laughs> there we are. And I'm popping it on some greaseproof paper there. I'll do one more for you. So you can just see. So the first thing we do, we put it in our seasoned flour. Now the reason the seasoned flour is first, and we don't just go in with the egg, is because the flour helps the egg stick to our chicken breast. Then we pop our chicken breast in, and obviously the egg then binds the breadcrumbs on there. Oh God, that looks good. There we are, fully coated. I'll pop it on there. I'll do the next two and then come back. Okay, guys, look, I've got a piece of kit. I'm so excited, I can't wait to use it. Anyway, we're now going to cook our scallops. So, let's get a frying pan on. Get a nice bit of heat going in there. And to cook these scallops, we're going to use roughly two tablespoons of olive oil. So, I mean, obviously, I could kind of judge what that is, but I want you to see what's going on. I'm just going to turn that down a fraction. That's it, lovely. Right, guys, let's get on with our cooking. So, I'll make sure we cover the bottom. Now, what we don't want to do, let's just give that a second. What we don't want to do, we don't want to put our escallops into stone cold oil because the breadcrumbs will then just soak up all the oil and it won't give us a really good finish. So if you get your oil so it's just got a little shimmer on the top. Let me try a breadcrumb in there. Got one breadcrumb. No, that's not quite hot enough yet. So I'm going to watch that breadcrumb, come back to me and I'll show you when it's hot enough. So I want you to see this breadcrumb because it's just doing a little dance. It's not burning, it's not going to set the world on fire, but it's having a little jiggle around. <laughs> it's got the old Italian tarantella playing in there. So we pop one in, as you can hear, nice little sizzle as it goes in, and we chop our second one in. We're going to do them two at a time because what happens is quite often people put too much in a pan and when there's too much and it hasn't got enough room to fry, what it does, it creates steam. When it creates steam, we get more of a kind of, well, a steaming effect rather than a frying effect and we want these to fry. So each side is probably going to take about four or five minutes. Um, when I've turned them over, we'll come back and I'll give you some I'll tell you exactly how long. Obviously, I've got a new, I mean, new piece of kit that I'm so excited about. I've got my new bit of kit. I'm not quite sure how it's going to work, but hopefully it just works like the stove and I'll be able to tell you. This turns out to be quite hot, so I've had to turn it down uh, onto its lowest setting. Uh, that is perfect, and that has taken roughly four minutes each side. But what I have done is I halfway after a couple of minutes I flip them over because I'm not used to this so just to see how they are. So roughly about four minutes each side and we're pretty close to those being done. And what I'm going to explain to you when let's have a look. Yeah that is perfect. So flip that over one more time. Now what what my mum Carolina <laughs> what my mum does is obviously she's cooking for quite a few people so she batch cookies cookies she batch cookies it she batch cooks it earlier drains it on paper like this this is going to need one more tablespoon of oil she batch cooks it if there's quite a few of us and then she pops it in the oven for about six or seven minutes brings them back up to heat, and they're absolutely beautiful. So if you have a family with a few children, uh, or if when we come out of lockdown, you're cooking for uh, a group of people, cook them earlier in the day, pop them in the oven for five to 10 minutes, keeping an eye on them, 
and then you can serve them perfectly. What we're doing, we're going to cook all four, we're going to drain them obviously because we're filming, um, it's impossible for me to uh, run around and do all different things at once. We're going to do exactly that. We're cooking these, we're draining them on paper, and then we're going to reheat them in the oven later and serve them. And I'm going to show you how we serve them with our spaghetti. Our pasta's now cooked. People ask me, how do you know when your pasta's cooked? Well, you read the packet, but you taste it as well. And do it slightly under because we want it al dente. You can see my pasta sauce is looking quite dry. You're going to wonder why. And so, Jay, that doesn't look great. Let me tell you, that's exactly what we want. If you watch my how to make Italian pasta sauce video, you'll see. And we're going to, we've intensified all those flavours. And now we're going to use some of the cooking water to kind of reinvigorate it. There we are. Now I'm going to get my pasta straight out and straight see some of the water there. Oh, something. There's more cloth. Straight in, put that to one side. So, immediately, I use some of the water because I didn't drain it, but you can drain it and retain some of the pasta water. You'll see straight away that, oh God, that is looking unctuous and amazing. The eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that I'm using linguine and not spaghetti, like I said, because um, I thought I had spaghetti and I only had linguine. But it's really gonna make no difference. So as you can see, the sauce all of a sudden has become this like amazing, unctuous sauce from something that looks so dry. And that will have so much flavor. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn everything off and I'm just gonna let that settle. Let your pasta and the sauce become best mates. Let them settle, let them have a relationship. <laughs> and then once they've settled, just a couple of minutes, we're gonna serve them. That's a plate up. We got a chicken escallop there. And I've got one of these big forks that you do, um, you hold your meat with when you carve it. Okay, just roll some of your spaghetti around that fork because we're on lockdown, we can't go to a restaurant, so let's serve our food as nicely as we can while we're on lockdown to make it look as good as we possibly can. So, let's come in. It's as simple as this. Pop a couple of bits of lemon on there. Let's get a little drizzle, and just a touch of olive oil. We don't want to drown it. Okay, we're gonna put a little bit of Parmesan cheese on there. Couple of basil leaves. There we are. Forget about going to a restaurant. That is my Jason's special chicken escallop with my authentic Italian tomato sauce. Well, it's been a busy week on Jason's Lockdown Larder. I've cooked not only my favourite thing to have in an Italian restaurant, but I know, Rachel, it's yours as well. Obviously, we can't go to a restaurant, so we're going to have date night and we're going to pretend we're in, well, we are in the best restaurant of all because we're in Jason's Lockdown Larder. I'm going to have a nice glass of wine and I'm going to start planning Jason's Bank Holiday Blinders for next week, so keep an eye out for that. Check out my YouTube channel. If you like the video, Please share it, uh, please like my page and stay safe and well. Thank you for watching.